So the first first order of business uh, is to approve the minutes of the June 15th meeting. We had a special meeting, and that was in preparation for voting on the um, on the purchase of, of the dialogue. So any any questions or comments about the minutes? All in favor of approving? Okay, great, thank you. So the next thing we're going to talk about, we're going to review and discuss the descriptions of the RTM standing committees. Um, I think we'll be talking about them in general and also as how they pertain to public health and safety. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Jack Davis, who is also um, with Frank Kemp. And, and Jack, if you would just give us a little bit of an overview, that would be great. So, this actually started a year ago, December. Yeah, come on up to the podium. <laughs> so, okay. I think you guys see me enough, so you don't have to. All right. This started last December um, when one of the goals that I've always wanted to do is to have people understand what their responsibilities were in the committees. So, and part of it was to help rules when something came in there to say, oh, it's dealing with this, this goes to this committee, that's primary, this is secondary. So, um, so that was the first part. And then, I've been on the RTM for a number of years. I decided to look at the code for the descriptions of what our committees do. And my best explanation is after reading them, I was gobsmacked. And if you don't know the British term, that's because you go. I, I was at an F&B meeting, I read it to Kate Bush, and Kate's mouth dropped to the table. So it has such things in there that the RTM committees are responsible for administration, personnel, and finances. Well, that's interesting, because we're not. The only personnel sign that we have is if somebody wants to add FTE and only on the town side, we can say no, 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 and we can cut it during the budget. Otherwise, we don't have any say on what FTEs they have. But if you read a little bit more, it says in the public works that they're responsible for the incineration facilities in the town. I've lived here 37 years. I didn't know that we had incineration facilities. And I happened to mention it to somebody who lived here his whole life when I was helping out at the swap shop. And he goes, yeah, Jack, you see all these walls around here? That's where the incineration facility was. So it has to be like 40 years since we've looked at any of these things. And so what, what I did first was identify boards, um, boards, commission, advisory groups. Then following, because of the organization of the town, looked at how the towns organized from a budget and department. So for this committee, it would be public health and safety, which includes police and all the fire departments and other things and grants there, and um, health and human services, which includes everything else. But there's other commissions there. So there's the Youth Commission, there's the Age Commission, all that, that are all out there. Um, I then went into grants. I went into reserve funds. I went into um, other groups, which, you know, and even I missed some. There were 102, and I missed some because I was talking to somebody who's trying to set up a meeting with F&B. And on education, I forgot to put down CDSP or CPAC because those are groups that... If you're on the education committee or if you're on F&B, you actually meet with and follow. So it sort of lays out, as one person on the committee when I went through it a little bit, it hasn't been approved by anybody, by the way. This right now is my work, so if you don't like it, blame me. Um, if it, it sort of memorializes some of the roles and responsibilities of, of all of our committees. But, you know, Mark had a letter on my committee, and he had set something up. Um, in public works before Monica had it, now Ralph had it, where people were assigned. So um, Frank Alderman handles the sewer authority, and quite honestly, if I have a question on it, I can call Frank 
and he knows more about it than anybody other than Ed. Um, and so this also involved, provides engagement, because if you're looking at a committee, maybe you want to look and follow. doesn't mean we have a say in what goes on in that commission. doesn't say many of the committees that we have, like the beautification, really don't have financial say or the age. They don't have control of finances. Um, but it does allow people to be abreast of what's going on in town, bring it back to your committee, cover the areas that you want to, and it gives an idea for anybody who's potentially, and this is involved, potentially going, you know, trying to decide what committee you want. Well, you can go through the list, and first of all, it tells you what goes on in town. There's 102, and by the time I'm done, there'll be 110, I'm sure, because I missed ones. Um, but it says, here's, here's how the town operates. Here's our boards and commissions. Our next goal is to try and put a two-sentence line to every one of those. What's its charter? So like on five-mile commission? Well, first of all, it's in the code. Second of all, the RTM has a responsibility to approve the membership onto it because it's a state committee. And it's responsible, obviously, for Five Mile River. What it's responsible for on that, I have no idea. So, Do, if I'm just talking about that, I remember a few years ago we were approving a, a one or two members to be, to be on it, and neither of them had come to the RTM meeting, and and it was just people were incensed that, that we were going to vote on this and we didn't know who they were. Yeah, so it, it, it was it was kind of a you know. So, and then one of the other things I'm going to do is, like, many of these commissions, boards, I mean, I just happened to quote one because I happened to mention it to somebody because we're looking, it's an advertisement um, that uh, looks like they're reestablishing the building review committee, so they're looking for electricians, plumbers, or other people of that nature. So, I mean, that's on there. Some of these are in the code. Others aren't. But... If it's in the code, when we have the two sentences of, you know, the, you know, it, it's easy if I go to the health advisory, because I just go to Mac and say, what do you guys do? But um, this, we should have with the code references, just so that people, if you want to read about what goes on in town, it's sort of like a living document that ultimately will be managed by the rules committee going forward, because there'll be changes on it. Um, and go from there. Um, just another little quick little thing. So public works definition says it's responsible for all town facilities except schools, parks, recreation, and police facilities. Now, schools make sense because they have their own thing. But in doing this analysis, I found out that Ed Gentile is a, an ex-official on the um, Park and Rec Commission. And in fact, when we did the basketball courts that over in Cherry Lawn, Park and Rec had some responsibility in, in implementing and completing that job. That's not necessarily true. They also, and I'll cut out my sarcasm, um, saying that they did it from the first a, a rare occasion. Done it. Yeah. Um, Park and Rec, since almost the time that we built the new police facility, has been working with the police chief in fixing the air conditioning, the uh, public things. Works, yeah, I'm sec so yeah, uh, public works has been working on that police facility over the last 10, 15 years. So mm -hmm. I gave something to Mac that said, okay, you have public health and safety, if, you know, from a high level, public health and safety, and um, human services, and um, um, what's the other one that was there? Um, oh, yes. health, and health, and human services. But it's then to take with the other definitions that are on that list and merge them, all right? So take part of the things that are there, you're responsible for following, you know, monitoring, and reporting, because that's what committees do when they report, um, on what goes on here. And in fact, the committees become, in my opinion, uh, in the code it just says that F&B is a liaison 
um, of the Board of Finance to the RTM. I've added that the Education Committee is a liaison of the Board of Education to the RTM because that's also true, but wasn't in the code. Um, that's why I always, our committee always leads in saying, here's the bond without going into the detail. And then the detail says, oh, we're doing sidewalks, oh, we're doing this and that. But here's the higher financial. Is that because it's a bond, hence Board of Finance, hence us? Um, but it's to merge those. And I feel that all of the committees, first of all, represent the RTM back to those committees and commissions to have input, cajole, whatever else you need to do to manage what it is. I like to say if you're on the RTM, you're a Jedi. If you're on one of the other boards, you've gone to the dark side. But, you know, be our Jedis and put our input that we have to do. But then once decisions are made, the RTM committees become a liaison and representative back to the full RTM of what went on there. That's what these reports were all about. So it's a working relationship. And so that's basically what, what this is. It sounds a lot more holistic than it really is. Um, but that's the goal, is to lay some things out, have input from people, look at what's been assigned. You know, you guys have all been here, say, you know, you forgot this one. You know, or I'm not sure this one is here. Or um, the new revenue committee, that I assigned to Park and Rec, which is one of the things that we're going to be going through tonight. Um, when I spoke to Adele, she goes, you know, I see that we're primary, and you didn't put you guys as secondary. Are you, are you punting on that? I go, oh, okay. Yeah. So take a look at it. You know, I can use help in getting definitions here for, you know, for what the committees are, and but also take a look and get back to Matt and say, well, this interests me. I want to find out more about this. Uh, because it does encourage engagement. You know, I, I, I like an RTM that's engaged. That, I mean, you didn't just come here so that you have your name in Wikipedia. It's, <laughs> you know, it's, it, you came here because you want to provide some service back to the town. And this is part of that to help people decide what interests you. Because if it interests you, you're going to do a good job on it. So that's my more than two cents. Well, there, there's an awful lot of commissions that were noted that we're responsible for. And it yeah. just be a matter of divvying them up. So, you know, like, like with, with pick on myself, is so let's say I want to be more involved watching the police commission. So I get kind of get caught up with what they've been doing for the last six months, but then maybe I'd start making sure when they have a meeting, I don't necessarily have to attend it, but I could watch it. They're all recorded. Look at look at the minutes really quickly, and then if something comes up, I can easily kind of bring everybody up to speed. And I think kind of that's what you're getting at with with, with, with all the commissions. Yeah, and and have everybody not just rely on chairman, not just rely on the vice chair or a secretary. You know, you guys are a team. The way teams operate is everybody contributes. So that's that's part of the philosophy. So if we also come up with a what I'd call an elevator speech for what we do as, as a public health and safety, then do we give that to Frank and he incorporates it? This gentleman is responsible for our code, charter, ordinances, and everything else, which is which the rest of us don't want to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> Considered responsible for it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, if, if you don't like it, blame him. I'm going to shoot this correctly, but I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Let's see. Senator. My name is Frank Kemp, chairman of uh, Town Government Structure and Administration. Good old TGS and I have a good mouthful. Uh, Jack uh, actually identified over 100 entities. Uh, that exist in the town, far more than I ever guessed there would be. But he failed to mention is that uh, over 30 of them uh, are, are within this committee. Um, it, uh, this listing will be a great help at uh, time of the budget. In the collateral effort, uh, we've been reviewing the town code 
as you know, we have town charter, and then which as a fairly orderly process of uh, a slow process of changing. But then we have the town code of ordinances, which can be changed, which we do change uh, at a meeting with a majority vote uh, in the RTM. Appendix B to the code of ordinance are the operational rules for the way the RTM works. Sets so up how many meetings are noticed, uh, how we vote, and a significant section is, is how the committees are uh, defined and arranged. There's seven, they call them standing committees. Uh, there are seven. This is one of the more important ones. And uh, the definitions that are found within Appendix B to the town code are, to say the least, archaic. For example, on uh, the Department of Public Works, they're still responsible for running the town incinerator. Yeah. Okay. They haven't had an incinerator in 40 years. Uh, there are other subtle uh, errors, and we call them buggy whips. They're, they're buried. And a lot of work we've been doing over the last couple of years is to kind of remove the buggy whips and bring the, keep, the, keep the town code uh, current. So this uh, interlocked uh, effort of what Jack just described, leading to the revision of the town code, is something we'll all be involved in in the next couple weeks, maybe, maybe even next month. Uh, the list that Jack prepared, I believe, had a 102 entities, and as you said this evening, you found some more. Yeah, found and, some and, changes. Ralph, and Ralph found some changes as well, which is which is good. We also found, by the way, some committees that when I called up Kate and said, "What is this committee?" She goes, "Oh, Jack, that's been disbanded for years." I said, "Get you off the website." <laughs> so that's part of it. It also helps us clean up the website. I'd like to have this as like a web page on the website yeah. as well. And uh, Jack and I have sort of been arm wrestling over the last got both days. But when I prepared, I took the list of over a hundred uh, entities and sorted them down by committee. And what you see is the uh, public health and safety listing of uh, over 30 entities that are listed there. Um, we have reached an agreement. I don't know that we have, but let's hear we it. We have first. reached an agreement that he's, <laughs> his life, anybody who's done data processing knows that if you have two databases, you're in trouble. Keeping them in sync, you know, adds changes and deletes. Now, uh, basic principle, you have one database. And so uh, the database that he has published and will revise and will keep current is the master. What you're looking at is today's pull off of it. And, uh, we're, we're not maintaining two databases. It's just mere, merely a listing of public health and safety re uh, uh, responsibilities at the moment. So as we move forward within the RTM, um, the master list will be a great help in organizing and charting what the next budget it's not just budget. Be. It's not budget. A financial, financial. No, no, it's not even that. That's this is also policy and procedure. Okay. All right. So there's a lot of things that go on in this town. Now, some of them, if it's going to P and Z, we follow. But there's other things that go on in P and Z that we don't necessarily know. So we didn't have to approve inclu inclusionary zoning, but that is there, and that's a big tool that argues why Darien has addressed certain issues in the 830G issue. So I'm, I'm not getting political on that. I'm just making that as a statement. So there's a lot of different things that are going on. Youth services, um, different decisions that they're making there. The, the health department and how they dealt with the pandemic and there were decisions there of which some of which was reimbursed. So I don't know that that's financial but it definitely defines what we're doing in the town. And I think that's almost as important, you know, when we have 
to start off what's going on in our RTM meetings. Personally, I have less of an interest in what's happening in Stanford and Norwalk as opposed to listening to a committee chair come up there or a committee go over there and talk about what's going on in their part of the world. Because I, I attend enough meetings as it is I, I don't know what's happening in PNC. I don't know what's happening in the Youth Commission or that. But I am interested. So that's something that we might incorporate going down the road to just inform ourselves. The quarterly meeting that the Board of Selectmen have is a great report, by the way. So what uh, you'll see is a parallel effort uh, to the activities that Jack has described. And what will fall out of that is a revision and codification within Appendix B to define what the committees will do. It will refine statements about the budget and policies uh, so that uh, there's a guideline that we can follow. Uh, and it will most likely refer out to the master copy. Keep a copy of this that I just distributed. It's a historic document. You will never see it again because it will change. And this is just a little snapshot of where we stand at the moment. So I, I guess if I can repeat back, our assignment is to come up with a kind of a, a short, concise, three, four sentences of what, what we do that anybody who wants to get on the RTM and wants to know what public health and safety does can read it and understand it. Yes. And then the second thing is we, we should divvy up among all these commissions, everything that's listed here, and have, have somebody or two people kind of responsible for it. You know, like like be the buddy for it, and yeah, I think that's that's. With well, reference to the first thing you mentioned about the elevator speech description, mm -hmm. uh, right now there are two inputs in the package that you may want to distribute. Yeah, I think I already did. It came out that it has a copy of what's existing, and you can go to Municode and and find it easily. Mm -hmm. But there's a page that has the descriptions, archaic. And uh, Jack did a nice job recently. Mm -hmm. uh, an email uh, said, "Well, they could be. They could look like this. Mm -hmm. A blend here uh, uh, will, will result in uh, action before the RTM at some point uh, mm -hmm. to clean up, clean up our act." So I will s say something else that I think Frank and I agree to. Um, the goal is to have at least a draft of whether or not it's the subsidiary or the higher level. I always like dealing with the higher level because I like dealing with the full town so that when you're reading it, you can see what's going on in the full town. Um, but Frank splitting it out is extremely helpful. So um, we're hopeful to have that and as some definition for those available for the next legislative body, of which I hope to see almost all of you or all of you here, elected or re-elected or continuing your service. Um, to get the code done, we don't have time to do it, and as you recall, only if it's an emergency are we dealing with anything in our November or December meetings um, legislatively. So, um, and we've been doing it lately, which I'm very proud of this organization for doing but probably in the April, May time frame is the goal to um, where Frank will be presenting back to the full RTM and we'll change the code. Well, just the way the committees work now, um, it's open, open season on the description and TGSA, TGSA will consolidate it, present the rules, and it will be back out on your on your doorstep, the way we usually work for you to consider these changes. And then, you know, it's slow, but we've been operating under those rules for 40 years, and so we can take our take our time, deliberate time, uh, to get it to get it right. But what we do will be will will be done uh, with the benefit of having the uh, database straightened down. But they'll work together, and uh, the town code change should properly follow the other effort. Yeah, I, I should mention, I said that this started in December. Unfortunately, we ended up with a budget, or as I said jokingly to generally today, Jen Chinesky, our director of finance. Um, you know, 
and I was ready to work on it in July as well as all the projects that I hadn't worked on because it was budget season. And then the town decided to look at some island, which sort of um, <laughs> just, I mean, I, while that created a lot of work for f and and a lot of other committees, I will tell you, it took a lot, you know, our Department of Finance for running a $30 million business has four people. And it took a lot of their efforts to go and do other things like preparing schedules, this, that, and the other, instead of getting certain things ready for our auditors and year-end closings. So, you know, while I'll say, it, you know, I got grief at home because I wasn't doing this painting job or that, um, you know, the Department of Finance and some of the other departments in town probably had a lot more on their plate than I did. Okay, any questions? I, I should, we always should ask them. Anybody have any questions, comments? I think we're I'd not. Like to, I'd just like to make one comment um, from some of the discussions that the orientation of this is to help us understand what our responsibilities are, but in particular, new people. So that when, I don't know if you remember when you came on the RTM, you were going to pick a committee and you looked at two things and said, okay, that one sounds good. So we're trying to get away from that and more to say, oh, this is what that committee did, does, there's a lot of pieces to it. Or when you get, you didn't get your first choice, you got your second and third choice, you can go back and say, okay, this is the committee I'm on, let me make sure I understand what the committee does and how I want to um, get involved with it. So thanks to both of these um, gentlemen, I see that the committees can get kicked off in, in a better place when we start in November and December when we start the next year's um, operation. That's not to say that the committees aren't functioning well now. Oh, yeah. I, I, I always want to say this. Everyone, including my own team, is always looking how to improve. But, you know, you, the committees, I'm very proud to be part of this organization and the committee reports that I'm sitting in the audience and listening to. So I, I just want to say it's not that anybody thinks that anybody's not doing jobs or anything. It's, uh, to me, that's very important to stay. I like this to the back door. Well, it, sound, it sounds like then what you really want is for us to, to come up with a, a um, you know, a message statement of what, what we do in three or four sentences, whatever, and have that ready that it, it Will be something, and all the committees will have it ready for that. But like you said, Lois, when you when you get get elected in November, and then the next week you're choosing your committee, that's when you would see that. As well so as the kind of more master table. plan or the you know. subsidiaries underneath it. Meg, I think the timetable is to get a draft of that for the next rules meeting, where Frank and Jack are going to be trying to get things through, which, of course, the next <laughs> next rules meeting is October 3rd. But um, That ain't happening. I'm coming back from San Francisco on a wedding, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, whatever okay. can be done, or even if, you, if we don't have our whole wording, it would be helpful just to have some feedback. Sure. Um, this is our plan, so that when they speak to the rules committee, they, the mm -hmm. rules committee will have a sense of what, what are the expectations for now, and what are the expectations for what can go out in November. Well, I could whip something up as a starting point and then just send it out and then everyone just kind of tweak it, check my spelling, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff and then, and then we'll get something working. And, and you guys are going to find, I, I found this in my own committee, there's some people in, um, we, we happen to have lost one number, um, a couple of years ago, um, which was very devastating, but there's some people who have some really good skills here. You know, like, there's people on F&B who write much, much better than I do. And so if you're a good writer or somebody who can bring things together, volunteer to do this. Because I write the way I talk, and that's more than four or five sentences. <laughs> then we have to use spell check. Oh, that I can <laughs> Okay. Well, I think that's good. Okay, so thank you, gentlemen. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you very much. Great job. Could, could I sit in on this next? Sure. That would be interesting. Yeah. yeah. We won't even charge you. <laughs> so I'm going to take my lead. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Thanks, Jack. Proceed a little bit. Um, thank so you.
So the next thing, um, I thought I'd just run through some of the things that we discussed at the last advisory board of health meeting, which was which was last Tuesday, and um, these are things that David Kanoff um, talked about. Some of it you might have seen when, because I try to send out the quarterly summaries that, that he presents to the to the uh, selectmen. So I think there was one that maybe went out in July, and, and a lot of this was referred to that. But um, what he what he talked about was. Um, Right now, we're getting into the seasonal flu shot season. Uh, the town's going to be doing flu shots here at the Mather Center um, in mid and late October. It's going to be by appointment only. I think that's already opened up. You can, you can go to, to um, the, the health department's um, website within, within the, uh, the town website and, and sign up for an appointment. You can't just walk in. You, you need an appointment. Uh, but on November 8th, on, on um, voting day, um, the, he calls it vote, vote and vax. That's mm -hmm. going to be if you're if you, you can come to town hall if you've not voted here. But they're going to be do, doing with doing vaccination with no no um, no appointment required. Um, and the the one thing is kind of kind of changing going forward is is that there's no real thought process of doing any more of the COVID vaccines here at town hall where we have a, a big thing. There just isn't a demand for it. It's it's really waned off. It's not that people aren't getting the boosters, but they're getting them. They're getting them at the local pharmacies here in town. The CVS, Walgreens, and Greaves um, does that. Um, the other thing that's going to be changing is that the, um, the 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 trailer that's been very successful at the, in the back parking lot at the at the Darien train station. Uh, they're down now where they're only getting one or two people coming a day, um, and there's there's still also uh, you can get testing. Done at um, oh, St. John's. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> St. John's Church. Um, but th just what was kind of funny was that the um, the the, tr the trailer that was in the in the parking lot was very successful, but it was just recent that that the um, um, the, you know, the people administered the train tracks, Metro North came and said, "Well, we need access. You've got to move that trailer." <laughs> <laughs> so it just kind of all came together that that um, it was it was decided that they're they're gonna they're gonna pull that out. And, I mean, frankly, there's more people commuting, and they need, they need the more space for, for cars as well. Um, and and he wanted to also point out that there have absolutely been no um, town cases of monkeypox. I mean, I kind of joke about the name monkeypox, but it, but it is serious. But there's there's been no no cases of that in town. Um, there's also um, working on emergency preparedness um, in, in town. Um, I don't think it's happened yet, but they're doing a, um, they're going to do some type of a drill this fall. Um, for, so if something were to happen in, in town hall, um, the employees here are prepared for it. Um, that includes food safety and, and drinking water. Um, and I think that's going to be presented to the selectmen on, on October 3rd, some type of a, a blueprint for that. Um, and the other nice thing with, with the um, health department is it's, it's been a long time coming, but by year end they're going to be able to take credit cards for when, they, when they're charging, like when they do inspections, for example, in, in, in town and, and the businesses, like, like the restaurants, um, ha have to um, pay for their certification. That before they, they were always told to write checks, and it's just so much easier to, to, to do it um, online with, with plastic. So that's, that's been a long time coming. Um, and then the other thing that's happening is that the, the town is preparing, they're calling it a pot in a box, but that was something that we voted on to have a whole container full of everything we would need if uh, in, a, in a disaster. So it could be masks, it could be gloves, things like that that are, that are ready to go rather than the last time around where they were scrambling to get things, some things were dated, they were, they were, they were beyond their useful, usefulness. Um, but they'll have everything in, in, in one container. And that, that's being paid for with the ARPA, ARPA funds that we approved. Um, the other thing that's happening is, is that um, there's a lot of food truck business in town. And the, the food trucks um, right now have to be, basically every town has their own little permitting thing. And, and David's working towards getting reciprocity to that. It seems kind of, kind of crazy too if you're running a, a food truck business that, you, you know, if, you, if you've been approved to do business, say, in Stanford, why can't you come in with the same permit and show, show someone in, in Darien that you've already been, already been checked out? 
So that's something he's, he's been working on. Um, and then just in general, the, the um, inspections for, for the department have been increasing because more and more now things are coming online. There's going to be approximately 30 new businesses that are being created with, between um, some of the businesses in Corbett, but more so down in the, in the Heights area. Um, with, with the Federated project. I mean, they're, they're pretty soon to start opening and, and apartments are coming online. So there's a lot of inspections going on with that. Um, this summer there, there were um, there were no beach closers, which was nice. The whole, whole summer they never had to, even though even though there were some heavy rainstorms or they didn't have to close the beaches. Um, currently, you can still go use the beach, but, but the, the lifeguards are no longer there. You have to be, be con conscious of that. Um, there's been no West Nile cases, West Nile virus cases in Darien. There's actually been one in the whole state, so that's that, that's been a pleasant surprise. Um, and the, the town is going to continue to offer radon kits. Um, last year they, they issued 74 radon kits, and 74 76 percent of them were, were returned, which ended up being the highest in the state by a long shot. And the state health department actually inquired what why. What did you do? They almost didn't believe it. But our town had, had actual town employees that would follow up with people. They'd be given a radon kit, and then two weeks later, they'd follow up with one or two phone calls. So they, they really um, used them. Um, and um, David has also um, helped spearhead uh, a letter of oppor opposition to advertising for marijuana. You know, the marijuana sales are, are now going on in the state. And he's concerned about the advertising and the adverse effect with children. So he's he's working on that. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. So um, it was a it was a good meeting. Um, so that's 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 that. Um, any any announcements? Any other topics for discussion? Because it, it's. We, we can bring things up. Well, just related to the, sure. um, the health department, which we didn't go into, but um, uh, about the polio, I wanted to mention that it was in Rockland County and that the state of Connecticut has um, advised to say, for example, in the whole, it's on the, on the web, if you, nobody's been vaccinated, even as an adult, you get the whole series. Um, but um, otherwise, you know, sometimes a booster or whatnot, but you can go to the web site um, and look at that. The, I also read um, that Connecticut, there's been no polio virus in any of the wastewaters that they've checked out, and it's all local. The Stanford, uh, Danbury, um, where New Haven, all over the place, they've checked wastewater, and there's been no cases of polio in the water. So, I mean, that's good news. So I think we're pretty okay with that so far. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, uh, why don't we do a motion to adjourn? All in favor? Okay. Well, thank you. 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 Thank you.